What's up everybody, this is Cecil Alexander with Jazz Lesson Videos, and today we're going to be taking a look at the evolution of jazz guitar through an in-depth study of four different eras of jazz history. We're going to start off with the swing era, where we'll take a look at the playing of people like Charlie Christian and Django Reinhardt. We'll move our way to the bebop and hard bop era, where we take a look at the playing of Grant Green and Wes Montgomery. Then we'll move to the fusion era, where we'll see players like Pat Metheny and John Schofield. And then finally we'll end up in present day, where we'll be studying the lines of some of my favorite jazz guitarists of today. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some content from the course where I'm analyzing a Charlie Christian phrase. Uh, if you want to dive deeper into any of these concepts, feel free to check out the full course, Jazz Guitar Styles with Jazz Lesson Videos. Starting with Charlie Christian, he was a really great electric guitar player, one of the first major electric guitarists uh, that was known for his driving swing feel, uh, as well as his clear melodic voice leading. Uh, so we're going to take a look at a line from a solo of his on a tune called Swing to Bop. Uh, and this line happens over uh, B flat minor six. Uh, and he plays just this kind of simple idea uh, that's decorating the chord tones of B flat minor six. So, so we have this um, sort of rhythmic decoration happening between the fifth and the sixth. And then just going down the remaining notes of that minor six arpeggio. So uh, when you come across a line like this in a transcription, uh, in order to make it a part of your vocabulary, I'd first recommend checking out um, some different choral applications for this. So I mentioned that it can fit over B flat minor six, um, but it can also um, by itself sound like it fits over E flat seven. And in that case, you'd be playing kind of like an E flat nine sort of sound. Uh, and that rhythmic decoration would happen between the ninth and the third of E flat seven and then down the remaining notes of that arpeggio. Uh, it can also work over G minor 7 flat 5. In that case, uh, that little um, turn in the scale would happen between the flat 7 and the root. And then you'd land on the flat 7 an octave lower. Uh, and a more modern application could also work over D flat major 7. Um, and this would be targeting the sharp 11 um, of this chord. So. So um, when you have a piece of information like this that you want to get into your playing, I'd first recommend trying to improvise new phrase endings um, after you play the phrase. So you want to have like a constant stream of ideas um, after this, and that's going to help you sort of just like glue this information to your pre-existing vocabulary. So I might take um, just kind of like a static vamp, say on B flat minor six or any of those other chords that I mentioned, and again, improvise new phrase endings. So one example might sound something like this. And another example. And then one more. And then after you can do that comfortably, uh, you want to uh, improvise into the new phrase. So now you're kind of like enclosing this new piece of information with improvisation. Um, so I might do something like this again on B flat minor seven uh, or B flat minor six or any of the other three chords that I mentioned, E flat seven, G minor seven flat five, and D flat major seven. So maybe something like this. And once you can do that comfortably, uh, then you can ensure that once you get into a playing situation or you're playing over a tune or an extended progression, uh, you sort of have that piece of information to grab and put alongside your pre-existing vocabulary. For this next section, we're going to take a look at some bebop style exercises that are derived from a line that we analyzed in the course from one of my favorite jazz guitarists, Grant Green. Thank 
So next up, we're going to be talking about fusion era players. So we conclude each section of the course uh, by providing a playing example where I'm trying out some of the concepts from that era over a common jazz standard. Uh, we also include some analysis of exactly where to use those phrases and concepts within the form. Uh, so now I'm going to be improvising over all the things you are using some of the concepts from the fusion era. So next we're going to take a look at how to apply some modern improvisation devices over 2-5-1 and C major um, that are influenced by some of my favorite modern players. So for this last section, we're going to summarize all of the concepts we've talked about today uh, into a couple choruses on a tune. So this is going to come from the last section of the course where I talk about tying everything together so you can see how to create a cohesive solo that's comprised of all the concepts that we've talked about. So thanks so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and um, use the coupon code CECIL25 for an additional $25 off my latest course with jazz lesson videos.